Hi, everybody. My name is Todd Erdley. I'm the founder president of Vidion, and it's really a pleasure to be here talking to you today about sports betting as part of the sports video group, Sports Betting Forum. The whole notion of, of sports gamification is coming at us fast and furious, and it's really important to set the tone for a couple of key technologies that can be enablers. So let's dive in right away to understand what's going on. So let's start with the whole thing about live video. Live video is coming to us over and over and over. And, and here before you on this slide, there are a lot of data points that start to talk to you about just what is happening in live video, be it from the age demographic that is starting to really look for live video, be it the amount of, of interaction that people are getting, the engagement that people are getting with live video, the amount of people that say that, boy, if, if it was live and, and really in sync with what truly is going on in a stadium, what they would be interested in doing and how people would be purchasing more video. The fact of the matter is, and we could present facts all day long, live video is exploding. There is a big, huge, but we're not quite sure how we're going to get this done. So let's dive into that a little bit. And and why are we going to dive into it? We're going to dive into it because we want to create active outcomes. We don't want the passive outcome. What's passive? Passive is traditional broadcast delivered in a linear format where you sit back and you absorb whatever is happening. We want to create more of an active flow. We want to create active flows where we as fans are engaged. Why do we want engagement? Engagement creates consistency. Engagement creates gamification and, and monetization opportunities. Engagement includes any number of outcomes that really lead to a more consistent behavior that we obtain as providers of technology and video with our targeted audience. And that can happen in any number of ways as far as the active engagement. It can happen with the live social where now we're watching things with a dissimilar audience separated by many distances. And we're saying, look at how we're watching this game similarly, but different. You know, we're using social. We can do live betting as shown in the middle screen. Or we can even look at some of the advanced AIML things that are happening to show us the game in a totally different way. But we as technologists, we as industries, specialists, we need to figure out how to make this happen. And to really understand that, we're going to start with what the problem is. So traditional video workflows just have not lent themselves well to the delivery of a engaged uh, delivery of, of video. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at what the workflow is. The workflow has been, you have a series of cameras at an event. We're just going to pick, for lack of a better term, we're going to pick a, an American football game. Uh, and with that, that American football game, you have all these cameras, and each of these cameras is ultimately going to go into an encoder. And that encoder is going to create an RTMP workflow. And RTMP, as we all know, is been around forever and ever and ever and ever. This is the old Adobe Flash standard. And with RTMP as the on-prem encoder output, we push it up to the cloud. What does the cloud do? The cloud starts to do the heavy lifting. The cloud starts to do all the mathematical operations where it takes that Adobe Flash standard and it puts it into the Apple HLS format or the Android Dash format. And so there's a lot of math that's going on in the cloud and that, that, that math takes up time, it costs money, it, it requires many different vendors to create that workflow. And it can be a bit of a problem depending on what you're, what you're ultimately trying to achieve. But once you create that HLS and Dash workflow, that Apple and Android workflow, you push it into the CDN and the CDN takes care of delivery. Now it pushes it all over the world and ultimately it might reside at a place where you have a betting platform or a player or any number of outcomes where it is a second screen event 
in front of us, the consumer. So this is the delivery mechanism. Source video through encoder into cloud delivered via CDN to our second screen device, be it a phone, a tablet, a computer, or even broadcast TV. But what we've really done is we've shown how there are all these bits and pieces that have to come together. And that can hurt reliability, that can hurt quality, that can have an impact on flexibility. And, and it definitely has an impact on delivery of low latency video. And because we're relying on the cloud, we also have an OPEX thing. So let's think about how can this change? Because this has been the traditional way. Well, what really is happening here, ladies and gentlemen, is we're starting to talk about this notion of a video compute platform. <clears throat> what is a video compute platform? Well, let's make it akin to what a smartphone is. A smartphone started out by just being a cell phone. A cell phone became a smartphone when it had computing functions added to it. And that compute enabled a wide range of applications to be used with that smartphone. Let's move that then all the way back to encoding. And encoding is a single purpose device. Its job is to get video into the cloud, just like a cell phone's job was to get a voice into the network. Now, if we take that video processing, that encoder, and we put computing power against it, and we create some base functions, well, now we have, instead of a single purpose encoder, we have a multi-purpose video compute platform. Well, that changes things because if you have a video compute platform, those functions that were otherwise happening in the cloud can start to happen on premise. And in the upper right, we have a list of some of the functions that would natively happen in cloud that can judiciously move to on-prem in a video compute workflow, in a video compute platform. And one of the most obvious things to start to address the needs that we're talking about today with sports betting and low latency is the notion of packaging. Packaging becomes really important because if we can package properly, we can change this workflow quite a bit. So again, we think that there are ways to change the notion of sports betting to have a better experience where we can achieve quality and reliability with flexibility, with lower cost, but it has to start with the delivery of low latency video. So let's dive into that one a little bit further and talk about some use cases. So here we go. What really is going on with this workflow is the showcase of how video can be delivered in a way that's different. What did we show before? We showed a source video going into a encoder that would produce RTMP up to the cloud and ultimately into the CDN. Take a look at what's happened here differently. Now we've introduced this thing called an edge compute. Again, what is edge compute? It is the combination of advanced video processing with computing power and key functions. And we said the way that we're really going to get after this for sports betting is to solve the latency problem. How do we do it? What we can do is we can use that computing power to put packaging. We can package in different ways so that we can bypass or augment what's going on in the cloud. So instead of the cloud being relied upon to do all that heavy mathematical lifting, we can move that mathematical lift all the way on-prem into this edge compute device. That allows us to output directly HLS and Dash in a low latency format. And with that, we can run it straight into an origin shield in front of a CDN and immediately push that through the network to the player in a very, very, very low latency way. And what we've shown here in this diagram is an HTTP-based workflow that supports both Apple and the Android world. 
we could substitute the output of that edge compute device by saying SRT. And with an SRT workflow, we could also create low latency. But you could take a web, you could take an edge compute environment a step further. You could even include WebRTC as a server on an edge compute platform and output with a WebRTC workflow. So in other words, as we think about compute on the edge in a video compute platform, the notion of what we're relying on the cloud to do, be it HTTP or SRT or WebRTC, that starts to move on premise in a device so that we can really deliver the low latency picture that is best suited for our application. So how does this become possible? Now we're diving in even further. Let's think about what the, what the innards, what the guts of a video compute platform really look like. So again, what is it? A video compute platform is advanced video processing combined with computing power. And for the sports betting applications, we really wanna dial back that latency. We want to get to the proper packaging so that we can output exactly what's needed to serve the customer. So as we look at this, there in that upper left, that is our advanced video processing. Think about that, everyone, as a classic encoder. That is the thing that's bringing in baseband or IP video and transcoding it or encoding it to the proper audio video metadata format. And then, and then what we do in the upper right is we start to use the computing power of this platform. And we put in the packager where we say, what formats do we want to package to? It could be HTTP, HTTP, HTTP. it could be WebRTC, it could be SRT. And, and since this is a computing platform, it could be ultimately, very shortly, Apple Low Latency HLS. It could include formats like RIST or QUIC. It can move with the industry because it's a platform. And then what do you do with this? You make this data available to an origin server that would be up in the cloud so that you can push all this information properly into the CDN. So you package, you serve it up, and you send this to an origin server. Now, that is great because that creates a workflow. But a workflow by itself isn't enough because what do we really need? We need an integrated workflow that is part of an overall platform. So how do you make that happen? Well, again, you have computing, and that computing can then say, I am going to give you access to this platform. And that happens in the lower right. So it might be a XML at, uh, access from the cloud where you talk to a local API. It could be then a local web server or it could be a cloud client. In other words, you're giving control of the platform to the cloud in a way that the cloud can then manage this device and integrate it into the workflow. So what we've hit so far is this video compute platform is an encoder, we've hit a packager, and we've hit control. Let's take it one more step. Let's look at the lower left. Now let's put the power in the developer. What about providing CPU power or neuroprocessing units or GPU or DSPs or any number of things where that this, this capability can be enabled such that a typical online video platform can take advantage of it to create unique outcomes? What would happen if this customer compute area was based on Docker? What would happen if containers built for cloud could seamlessly deploy on-prem and run in this video compute platform? So the notion of two disparate elements, cloud and edge, now are brought together with a video compute platform. So let's review. We have an encoder, 
we have packaging for low latency, we have control, and we have a compute area that is cloud friendly because it has Docker containers where those containers from cloud can move to on-prem. And as you start to think through what this means, the ability to integrate from video source through cloud to CDN and delivery starts to become very, very, very interesting. And we can do some unique things. So let's build this up. What are we really trying to do? We as an industry for gamification and sports betting, betting are trying to create a second screen event. For that second screen event to be really, 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 really great, it needs to happen as connected as possible with live video. And so we need to address that problem. And as we address that problem, what we do is we allow this notion of the betting latency window to reduce further and further and further. And so if we don't reduce that, now we have a separated event where we can't be part of the engaged sport. I'll give an example. Let's take baseball. So let's say that we're trying to gamify each and every pitch. If our latency for either the second screen or the overall betting platform is 30 seconds, and there is only 45 seconds between pitches, then the chance for somebody to engage in a deep, meaningful way to be part of that gamification has been eroded. What would happen? What would happen if we can now use this notion of an edge compute platform, i.e. a video compute platform, to reduce that, that delay down to 10 seconds, down to three seconds, down to sub-second? So between each pitch, the user is being presented with information that allows them to be part of a gamified experience where they're choosing their route, they're choosing their fandom, they're choosing their universal journey. They're choosing to engage in the opportunity to gamify with micro bets or any number of betting options. That's really what we're trying to talk to here, ladies and gentlemen. We're trying to talk about creating an outcome that is low latency <clears throat> so that we can have the most engaged fan. So the technology that is required for this is we have to have the video to the player in a time frame that is necessary for them to be engaged. And we have to bring that video from any number of angles, any number of IP feeds. And why do we want that? Because we want the journey to be personalized. And this all has to be delivered with low latency. So technology has to come together to solve all that. And when we bring this together, it becomes possible with a video compute platform. Because that video compute platform, if structured in the proper way, creates a standards-based streaming environment. You don't want to do this as one-offs because as soon as you do this as a one-off, that creates a splintered experience. By doing it with standards, you can deliver to a broad and dissimilar audience. But it also solves another problem because with a video compute platform, now you can do things as far as OpEx. You reduce the reliance on the cloud as far as its processing. You can move some of that to a video compute platform. You can reduce your OPEX. And because you're reducing OPEX, there's another outcome that happens. You're actually making it easier to deploy this. And the reason you're making it easier to deploy is because there's less steps in the delivery chain. There's less dissimilar pieces that must be augmented to work together. And so what is the outcome? The outcome is an audience experience that has improved quality, lower latency, higher level of engagement, a unified experience across a wide number of platforms. And the outcome is that it's an enablement. We're delivering the user, the customer, the fan, the experience that they want 
that personalizes it and allows them to engage in a totally different way. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just starting to touch the surface of what's really possible. The notion of gamification is going to come at us rapidly. The notion of augmentation of traditional broadcast is happening before our eyes. The notion of the fan engagement being a continual universe building is what is made possible if we can start to move from the single purpose encoder with the RTMP workflow to the availability of a video compute platform that allows us to integrate this into the holistic delivery of video. It's a pleasure to be here today as part of the sports video group initiatives. We very much appreciate what they're doing and the opportunity for me, Todd Erdley, the founder president of Vidion to share with you some ideas about how we can create great outcomes for fans. Thank you very much.